Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. By now I already uploaded many videos that explain how Cori system works and uh, how uh, DNA fingerprinting works. And in this video I'm going to explain how genetics uh, would calculate probability of certain, say, biological evidence uh, collected at the crime scene to belong or match uh, genetic profile of the suspect. And the judge can, uh, based on this information, can uh, come to conclusion whether a certain person is innocent or uh, if certain person uh, with high degree of certainty committed a crime. So, uh, once again, brief reminding. Uh, so, the CODIS system are based on the certain loci of the STR, short tandem repeats, every person may have in this um, uh, loci um, different number of uh, short tan tandem repeats. And because we are deployed, those only one chromosome present here, this is only haploid number of chromosomes, but actually we have two chromosomes number one, two chromosomes number two, two chromosomes number three, and so on. So one chromosome we got from one parent, another chromosome in each um, pair we got from the second parent. So from mother and from father. So at each locus we also may get with the two alleles that is uh, exact match or uh, which is the same, have uh, the same uh, length of the molecule or uh, may have different number of STRs and molecules would be of the different size. And we uh, actually uh, count repeats at each uh, molecule. For example, on one chromosome we may get 20 repeats, on the other chromosome, homologous chromosome, we may have, say, 7 repeats. So, uh, we would have number uh, which is going to be for this locus, for this person, 20 and 7. Here we may have, uh, say, 10 and 9. Here we may have uh, for certain um, person, 3 and 15, and so on. So, if we would uh, then uh, make genetic profile of the person, and then uh, if we would find probability, what is the probability that certain uh, genotype uh, would happen in um, human population? We would find that uh, on the average uh, two genotypes, if it is uh, not two identical twins, uh, may happen about uh, in uh, one person per ten trillion. So, if we if population of our planet would be 10 trillion, then we can say that probably we can find two people with the same genetic profile. So, this is very strong uh, tool that helps judge to and genetist to say with uh, uh, two biological samples taken from the crime scene and taken from the suspect match uh, each other genetic profile or not. And now let's return to our table here. And here we see eight alleles, but for each locus we have two alleles. So uh, one locus, two alleles, so you see identical names, allele number one, allele number two. Here is the second locus, also two alleles, third locus and Fourth locus, so each locus, of course, would be represented by two alleles because we are deployed. So for each locus, we have two alleles. And here in this column, we can find um, probability or frequency of each allele. So now, if you think that our calculations would be straightforward, we just have to multiply all these probabilities. Actually, you are mistaken. So, once again, 
if you think that we just have to multiply for example 0 0.0106 this is probability of um, allele number one by say 0 0.0198 this is probability of the allele number two by the probability of occurrence or frequency of the allele uh, number three or allele number one in second locus which is 0 0.0656 and by probability of the uh, next allele and probability is 0 0.0656 six and so on so uh, if you think that we just have to multiply all these numbers and we will find the probability of this specific genetic profile this is actually not how these calculations are done and in order to understand how actually such calculations are done let me show you simplified example. So, for example, let's say that at certain locus we have just two alleles. Uh, allele A and say allele A1 and allele A2. And uh, say occurrence or frequency of the allele A1 would be 0 0.5 and occurrence or frequency of the allele A2 in population in this locus also would be 0 0.5 because we have only two alleles that means that allele A1 plus allele A2 would make 100 uh, percent frequency can be different of course for example this can be say uh, 0 0.7 or 70 percent then a frequency of the allele a2 have to be 0 0.3 so together a frequency of these two alleles uh, have to make 100 percent or one so now you see that uh, in our calculations one equal to 100 percent now let's find all the probable combinations of these two alleles in population and frequencies of those combinations. And once again we have allele A1 in population and A2. A1 and A2 here on the side of our simple Punnett square. Uh, this Punnett square would help us to find frequencies and all possible genotypes. So frequency of the allele A2 is 0 0.5 as you remember and A1 also 0 0.5. 0 0.5 here and 0 0.5 here. So in first cell what's the genotype we expect? A1, A1. And what is the expected frequency? We just have to multiply uh, probability of um, A1 meeting another A1. And joint probability would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5. And probability would be 0 0.25. So next uh, would be genotype A1 and A2 and once again we have to multiply uh, probabilities of A1 and A2 which is also going to equal to 0 0.25 so let's put 0 0.25 here and here we expect genotype A2 A2 one also 0 0.25 and uh, a2 a1 here 
also 0 0.25. But in genetics, uh, genotype A1A2 equal to genotype A2A1. Because in genetics we don't have left side, right side. Uh, if two alleles are present in a cell, uh, allele A1 and A2, no matter which one on the left, which one on the right, uh, we consider this genotype heterozygous A1, A2. So that's why we expect that we would have uh, ratio of the genotypes as follows. Uh, one quarter we expect to be genotype uh, A1 and A1, 0.25%. And genotype A1, A2, as you see, uh, would be 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 would equal to 0 0.5. And genotype A2, A2 would equal to 0 0.25. Now, if we uh, combine all these numbers, so probability of uh, homozygous genotype A1, 25%, probability of the heterozygous genotype A1, A2 would be 50%, and probability of the homozygous genotype A2, A2, so let me put 2 here, uh, would be also 25%. And if we add all these numbers, we are going to get 1 or 100%. So now we can return to our table. And what we see here, uh, that probability of allele 1 for the locus 1 and allele 2 different. So this means that uh, here we have two different alleles. So in our calculations uh, we are going to use uh, next calculations. We have to multiply 0 0.0106 by 0 0.0198 and because these two alleles are heterozygous, we also have to multiply by 2, as you remember. And next, second locus, uh, we have two alleles, that is homozygous, as you see, homozygous. So let's add to our calculations, so we have to multiply by uh, probability of the genotype of the second locus, which is 0 0.0656 multiplied by itself, because these uh, two alleles are identical. So multiplied by 0 0.0656. But here, because uh, locus um, homozygous, two alleles identical, we don't have to multiply by 2, as in the first example. Now let's move to the next locus. Here we see frequency of two alleles, and we see that frequency is different. That means that, uh, once again, here we have two different alleles. So frequency of the first one is 0 0.0005. We have to multiply uh, by frequency of the second allele or occurrence of this allele uh, and probability is 0 0.1361 and we have to multiply by 2 and here also we have multiplication sign so multiplication sign here and the last locus as you see um, has the same frequency for each allele that means we don't have to multiply uh, these uh, frequencies 
by two because this uh, locus is homozygous. So basically, we have to multiply only by zero point zero seven eighty seven, and once again by the same frequency of the second allele, which is the same. So the same number, and uh, I'm not going to do all the calculations. Uh, hope uh, now you have idea how frequencies are calculated in genetics in uh, when we prepare a probability for uh, occurrence of the certain genotype. And my last remark would be uh, we also could use here uh, the formula which is a Hardy-Weinberg formula where frequency uh, of the certain genotype equal to as you remember p squared plus 2 pq plus q squared and all this equals to 1. So uh, once again p squared here stands for the uh, say genotype which is homozygous A1 A1 2PQ stands for the genotype that is uh, A1 and A2 and Q squared stands for the genotype which is uh, homozygous A2 A2 so as you remember the same uh, frequencies we got here in this uh, simple Punnett square, we got absolutely the same proportions as uh, described here in Hardy-Weinberg formula. Uh, heterozygous genotype we have to multiply by 2. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.